welcome to worship here at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in La Crescent, Minnesota. It is All Saints Sunday. Um, at least that's the Sunday we recognize it, the first Sunday in November. And so this worship will also be an All Saints worship. In All Saints worship, we give thanks for the saints who have gone before us, for the saints that remain among us, and for the saints yet to come. But there is no denying that worship, at least this worship, is for the living. And so the church recognizes that we, the living, come with memories of those we have loved and who are no longer with us. And those memories are sacred, they are ours. And if your memories are like mine, of those who have gone before me, they're complicated too. They, they can change and shift. Some of our memories hold regret. Some hold anger or hurt. And some of those memories are like precious gems that we never want to lose. So the church's role on All Saints Sunday is not to hold those memories for you, but to point to this belief we have that the, those who have gone before us are now saints in light. And also our role as a church is to cling to that promise that we too, because of Jesus, will join them someday and be saints with them. So I suggest that you pause this worship to gather a few things and also to take a moment. First, to gather some bread and wine or crackers and juice for communion because we will be having that later. But also, if you have a candle around, to light it, to remember those saints that you hold in your heart for their witness, for how they've formed you, and in thanksgiving that their work on this earth is done, and now that they rest with all the saints in the presence of God. So take a moment to gather those things and to remember those saints particularly dear to you. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, 
We confess we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in our thought, word, and deed, by what we've done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And then hear these words of forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your heart through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. If you hear someone described as a saint, what does that mean to you? I think we often imagine saints as these admirable people. They're the kind of people you'd want to stand up for you in court or to take care of your dog if you're going away. But because we think of them as darn near perfect, they're probably not the kind of people we might want to hang out with on Friday night. On the flip side, we might think of saints as the kind of people that when we stand up next to them, we feel pretty small. We feel like we don't measure up. But I want you to know this. In the New Testament, when we come across the word saint, it's never referring to a 
class of super duper Christians. In the, old, in the New Testament, saints always refer to all Christians. The super duper ones and the wimpy ones as well as the majority of us who fall in between there somewhere. And frequently in Paul's letters, he refers to the people as saints. Like in his letter to the Ephesians, he writes to the saints in Ephesus. And he's meaning all the people. And really, here's the bottom line about saints. Saints are not saintly because of what they do. That they love children or that they always showed up for quilting at church or that they never let an offering plate pass without something in it. Those acts of theirs do not make them saints. Saints are not saintly because of what they do. Saints are saintly because of what Jesus Christ has done for them. Saints are not identified by their wisdom or their good works, but one is a saint by the fact that they belong to Jesus. And you know that because that includes you and me. So consider yourself a saint. But, you know, for us, the living, there's more to the story, and I I will get to that. But first, on All Saints Sunday, we, of course, remember the imperfect people we love. I have often talked about in sermons my grandma, Alma Wagner, or my Aunt Laura. And as I age, that list gets longer and longer. I could add Bob Rosenberg, who was like a second father to me, or Phyllis Kirst, my mom's best friend, who was like a second mother. And now, of course, my parents, Carl and Ellie. And you have your list, too, of people that you have loved that have died. All imperfect people in this lifetime, but now all saints in light. So it is true, because what Jesus did for us on the cross, we too are saints. But just like Martin Luther describes, we the living are people who are at the same time saint as well as sinner. And for our loved ones, who have died, the sinner part, that's gone. That's no longer. And now I like to imagine whether they loved puppies here on this earth or they forgot birthdays and anniversaries every year, or whether they always shoveled their neighbor's walk, or whether they never darkened the door of the church, that all of them, as baptized children of God, are now saints standing shoulder to shoulder and together witnessing the face of God. Like the imagery of the hymn that we'll sing next, they have now cast their crowns before God and they all stand together, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Their crowns, the things of this world that they have done, well, That's now done for them. And praise be to God, what is left for them is the company of God, filled with joy and peace and love. But now for us, the living, in walks today's gospel, the Beatitudes from Matthew. Matthew's virgin. And it's familiar stuff to many of us, these blesseds, And I don't know how you feel about this lovely poetic word that Jesus says. It provides many with comfort, I'm sure, and this promise of comfort to come. But to me, sometimes, they make me feel more on my sinner side than my saint side. I mean, the Beatitudes can make me feel like I don't ever quite measure up. 
Meek? Not so much. Pure of heart? Definitely not. But maybe Jesus was simply blessing the ones around him who didn't otherwise receive much blessing. Blessing those who believe blessings would never be for them, because that sounds like something Jesus would do. He would spread extravagant love, throwing out blessing after blessing, especially to those who never really felt blessed on this earth. So on this day, when we come to remember the saints in light, but also come for some comfort, some blessing too, I want to share some modern beatitudes that I found from Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber and see if they fill you with some hope. She writes, Blessed are they who doubt, those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are those who feel they have nothing to offer. Blessed are the preschoolers who add vibrant chaos to wherever they are. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are they who have seen death up close and personal. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones for whom tears could fill an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried and those who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who mourn. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who no one notices. The kid who sits alone at the middle school lunch table, the laundry guys at the hospital, the third shift workers. Blessed are the losers and the parts of ourselves that don't want to make eye contact with a world that seems to only love winners. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underrepresented. Blessed are the meek. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard, for Jesus chose. Jesus chose to surround himself with people like them. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the foster kids and the special ed kids and every other kid that just wants to feel safe and loved. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people or for God's creation. Blessed are the burned out social workers and the overworked teachers and those pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kids who step between bullies and the weak. Blessed are they who hear they're forgiven. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven us especially when we don't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, because I think they totally get it. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. And finally, blessed are the cake bakers, the hand holders, the prayer warriors, the quilt stitchers. Blessed are the people who show up again and again and again, dear saints, who are sinners, blessed are you. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Amen.
excelling joy of heaven to earth come down fix in us thy humble dwelling all thy faithful mercies crown jesus the Let us turn our hearts to God as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, encourage and uphold your church around the world. We thank you for your word, which we receive as holy. Lead bishops, pastors, deacons, and all members of your church in lives worthy of you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, accompany our nations as we prepare for elections next week. Protect voters, voting officials, poll workers, and journalists. Guide leaders around the world that fair and wise decisions show care for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the Middle East, for Israel, and for the Gaza Strip. And we pray for an end to the destruction of property and an end to the pain and death of civilians. We pray for a ceasefire so humanitarian supplies can reach the people and Gazans can flee. We pray this for your mercy. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in your heavenly feast. We remember your saints gathered in your eternal presence, especially all who have died in the past year, especially the 17 members we will name at Prince of Peace on Sunday as well as those who are in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point in the offering in our church service on Sundays, it is offering time. And so we encourage you to continue your support of this church, of Prince of Peace, and the ministries that we do here, ministries that filter out not only into this community and state, but into the world. And so we thank you for your offering. And at this time, we'll have communion, so have your elements together in front of you. And if you have a candle lit, 
I want to remind you about that phrase that we confess in the Apostles' Creed, that we believe in the communion of saints. And I want you to imagine that we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses each time we gather around this table for this meal. So we begin with communion. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered together with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set up banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We walk in light of countless faces, bright as beams of rising sun. Certain as the morning chases, night in endless ages run. Turning eyes now to their shining memory, to their faithful past. Saints be now the truth divining, death be now but never last. When joy returns with laughter singing, thanks to God for life's sweet song, let us follow after bringing thanks to God for those now gone. Turning eyes now to their shining memory, to their faithful past. Saints be now the truth divining, death be now but never.